you get it all the way, Xavier. <laughs> you you, to, you totally get it. Now, your goal is to raise a billion dollars. How do you plan to do that? Well, um, there are 103 HBCUs. And so based on the data that we have, where we're saying that the, the average person now, that was pre, pre-COVID. So, you know, people aren't moving around as much as they used to. But based on the data that we have, we actually believe that we can achieve that number in shorter than five years, but we gave ourselves five years to achieve that number. Um, what we're thinking is, with, particularly with the larger schools, um, with the larger alumni bases, um, using that kind of 10,000 um, alumni number, we should be re- able to raise a significant amount of money with those schools in a short period of time. Yeah, I, def- and, I definitely agree. Yeah, so um, I think it's very achievable. And, and really, to be honest with you, being in the endowment and foundation space, I actually believe that a billion dollars is a low number. When, when you talk about these big notable schools having endowments of two billion, three billion, seven billion, right? And I'm talking about a hundred schools, a total of a hundred schools, raising a billion dollars for a total of hundred schools when one school has seven billion, I think it's very attainable. Right. I was reading somewhere where I think all the HBCUs, their total endowment is like two point something billion just Correct. total. And then uh what is Harvard's fifty eight or thirty eight? Right. Something like that. It's like a twenty, thirty times the endowment. So this can be, you know, game changing for um for HBCUs. And then I think part of building something is knowing your weaknesses. Sure. One of my weaknesses is talking to institutions. Yep. How do you get HBCUs on board? Because there's a lot of bureaucracy within HBCUs. Understood. And, and so I have a dynamic team that has relationships at literally all 103 schools. And so literally, if, if I were to pick up the phone and call any of these schools, um, I think I think the schools will have a conversation, but with the team that I have and experience that they have with HBCUs, it's a different conversation when my team picks up the phone and they call these schools. So it's all about who you know and who can and who they respect. And so when certain people on my team make those phone calls, it gets done and it gets done quickly. Do you think it has something to do with name? Like you have a good name, Xavier People sounds like it's about to do some business. Do you think do you think black people we need to be more intentional in how we're naming our children? No, listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, not at all. I think life is all about relationships. It is. I had a conversation with someone probably about an hour ago, and she was talking about how her daughter was struggling in school. And I was explaining to her, I said, listen, um, the average GPA of all CEOs in America right now is a 2.3 GPA. That's a fact. I'm right on. I'm right on par. And, and And so what I was explaining to her was I said, listen, just give you I mean, school is important, but I think it's all about having the ability to navigate through this world and network. Your, your way through this world because you're only as good as your network, who you know and who knows you. And so I figured that out early on. And so that's why I can graduate from the University of West Georgia and out of prestigious PWI or prestigious historically black college and university and still have the success that I have in life because I have a network that can help me navigate through life. 